Human history has become what it is today by repeating distraction and creation. Once the innovation occurred, the new value was born, and the one so far disappeared into the past. We humans have been walking on the chaotic and cruel history. And again, some innovation might happen in filmmaking photography today. Sony 1635mm f4G power zoom lens. Recently, I'm getting many requests like do the comparison of a Sony 1635mm f4 versus Tamron 2240mm or Sony 1635mm f4 version versus Zeiss version. Anyway, I'm seeing the word Sony 1635G a lot lately. Alright man, I gotta do this. I gotta make those videos you want. But I've never made a review of Sony 1635G PZ lens before, so I have no information about that. So today, I'm diving deep in only this lens to understand what this little guy is capable of and to make you know those comparison reviews in the future. And simply, I'm interested in this newbie. It's completely different, but I feel it's a good different. Like this new zoom system and continuous aperture control. So, I feel the new value of shooting is coming. This could be the new standard, new position of go-to versatile lens. Is this for video or photo? What about the actual performance and image quality? Is this gonna be a new player in 2022 or 2023? Who is this for? Let's witness together, you and me. What we already have is not always right to believe. Okay, first let's look at the build quality. So definitely, we have to start from this new zoom system. I mean this zoom lever and this zoom ring. I mean the new zoom system. So you can do the zoom with both of this ring and this lever. The response of them is not that bad. And this lever, the speed is not quick. It goes with a constant speed, which I thought it was a little slow for me. But because you can have a very stable zoom action, you can do this kind of gradually zooming in cinematic move and this weird opposite direction zooming in move. I think this is a huge benefit of having this zoom lever, but in photography, eh, it's a little annoying. On the other hand, you can have a quick zoom motion with a ring. Honestly, it took a little time to get used to this ring because it turns forever, you know? It doesn't have any start and the end. It just you know, turns continuously. So you never know what focal length you're using unless you see the monitor, but it tells you the exact number you're using, which I thought it was helpful. Plus, there is a huge reason why this ring turns forever, turns continuously. But I'm diving deep in that later in this video. And believe it or not, this lens has the aperture ring. The huge benefit of this is that you can have the seamless exposure control. This lens has click on and off switch. When it's on, you have the click feel when you turn the ring. But when it's off, it's totally seamless. That allows you to change the aperture naturally while you are recording. Also, you can lock this ring when you don't need it. And this lens weighs 0.78 pounds. And it has AF, MF switch, focus hold, and the filter thread is 72 millimeter. And the focus ring is, yeah, as you can see, it's very thin. Uh, that means uh, 315 p.m. every time it rings, but I don't know how to stop it. I don't know how to change the setting. My watch rings every day, 315 p.m. So yeah. Yeah, as you can see, the you know focus ring is very thin, but the you know feel is not that bad actually, but not great usability. I guess we were supposed to rely on autofocus on this lens, or we were supposed to attach the gear and follow focus. But anyway, we got Sony's almost full lens function with this small and light package. It's so efficient and functional. Honestly, I thought this uh, electric uh, inner zoom thing would be the trash. You know, I thought the you know, original normal zoom ring would be the much, much better. But actually, I love this. You know, obviously it lost some you know, joy of shooting, but it's so efficient. It gives me a lot of creative options. Creative options. I'll explain them in the next section, image quality. First, focal length. So it covers from 16 to 35 mil. You know what? This 60 mil is so good. You know, it's so wide, you know, it shoots all of me but the distance between me and a camera is not a lot i'll show you 
like this is where I'm standing and I can touch the lens so it's that close but it shoots this very wide dynamic view it's good but also this goes to 35mm which gives you the nice normal perspective if you kill the distance between the lens and the subject you can have this amount of bucket although it's f4 it's not that bad right and the minimum focus distance is 24 centimeters. Nice detail depiction. So here, let's go back to the creative option with this zoom ring. So, did you know the Sony mirrorless camera had clear image zoom mode? That allows you to zoom in the image 1.5 times longer in a camera, almost without losing resolution. In photo, RAW is not available in that mode, so I think it's pretty much useless. But in video, you can do S log 2, S log 3, you can have autofocus, you can have pretty much everything. So yeah, I think it's very useful. For example, in this lens, when you add 35 mil, you can do around uh, 1.5 times. So 52 millimeter using that clear image zoom mode. The biggest benefit of this ring is that you can do the original zoom 16 to 35 plus this clear image 1.5 times zoom with this ring because it turns continuously while you have to control it with uh, buttons in other lenses. And I found out there is no obvious lock of resolution by this clear image zoom mode. So this is normal 16mm and goes to 35mm. And using clear image zoom goes to around 52mm. Detail is not different, but also the amount of bokeh is not different, so it's just narrower. Plus, if you apply the super 35mm crop mode in this focus hold, 1.5 times crop again, and now it's around 78mm. When you compare the normal 35mm and this 78mm, I think 78mm image loses a little bit of crispness and detail, but still it's pretty usable, right? So basically, you can have this very wide 16mm to good standard 35mm, and nice cinematic 50mm and tight detail 78mm shot in one lens seamlessly. So many good options in this little guy. So next, sharpness and detail. Sony G lenses sharpness is always at good level. I always get good results, especially in nature. Like this situation was supposed to be very crunchy cause strong sunlight and bunch of trees, leaves and branches. But this lens handled them very well. The image is really sharp and detailed, but there is no weird, too crispy feel. Even if I crop the image at the post, it maintained the detail really well. In the streets, the depiction is good as well. Good highlight crispness and I love the natural texture of buildings. Lines are very clean. And the image is not too contrasty, really well balanced. But personally, I like more crispy and contrasty unique image. But definitely, uh, this sharpness is very easy to handle. It's for everybody. But you know what? The biggest image quality strength of this lens is color. Like I showed you in this comparison, Sony lenses color is most natural. It's not shifted to too orange, too magenta, or too blue. Nothing is too emphasized in a weird way. The sky tells you that. It's exactly what I saw with my eyes. This pure light blue is so beautiful and the gradation looks pretty good. And the color is relatively vivid, especially green and yellow. But that gives us really powerful impression. And good thing is not too much. Overall, the color is really rich and vivid, but natural and true to life color without weird color shift. Absolutely, I always trust Sony G and G Master lenses color science. In low light situation, this is F4 lens, so we cannot expect a lot. And it really depends on what camera you use. This time it was on Sony a 3 But yeah, what do you think? As f4, I don't see any huge flaw. More than that, I like this light depiction. Like this shiny, sparkling car headlight. I see this type of light effect a lot in uh, low aperture lenses like 1.4, 1.8 a lot. But this lens has a little bit of them. Not that bad. But you know what? Let's leave this topic for future comparison with uh, other Sony E-mount wide-angle zoom lenses I'm gonna make so today yeah I'm gonna stop right here so last thing is autofocus so when it's 60 mil it seems the focus is always on the subject even when I move my face back and forth or got close to the lens so fast it tracked it really well it was almost perfectly seamless and for quick focus motion, it handled it well. It's very fast, but the motion is very natural and the focus breathing is so small. And when it's at 35mm, oh my god. 
Of course, it's pretty fast, but more than that, I wanted to see how the motion is so natural and the focus breathing is so small. I think this autofocus is exactly what we want. Even when it's at 35mm and f4, with a little distance between me and the camera, that's why there is a proper amount of pocket. The focus is crazy fast, but the motion is super naturally seamless. And you still can have that performance for this kind of quick focus move. So I can say this uh, with 100% of my confidence, but this autofocus is the best. I've ever had, 100%, absolutely. All right, that's it, hope this helps you. So through this video, I found out one thing, I mean, one or two things. That is, this lens is definitely for video. Well, I didn't get a strong impact for photography. It's good, but that's just it. If you're a photographer, you can totally live with other cheaper uh, wide angle zoom lenses like Sigma and Tamron. I felt this is not quite uh, worth buying for people who do only photography. But if you are a videographer, regardless of the level you are at, this will be the go-to workhorse lens. That focal length options and the new zoom levers, which gives you the nice smooth zooming move. And the aperture ring is definitely useful for video. And incredible autofocus performance, great image quality. All of this, all of those nice uh, crazy functions and quality and performance with this light small package. But yet, in image quality, I'm not sure how this does compared to other uh, Sony E-mount wide-angle zoom lenses like Sigma 1620mm, Tamron 1720A, Sony 1635F4 Zeiss or 1635G Master or the new Tamron 2240mm f2.8. So I will make a comparison of this versus something. So what do you want me to compare with? Comment below. Comment below. Like it sounds like come and blow. Comment below. Comment below. I meant comment in below that's what i said not come and blow i gotta be careful about my pronunciation seriously but anyway at least i think i was able to deliver this lens's capability to you and so far based on the impression i got i feel this seems to be a future of videography because look at this thing it's so new and it's you know it looks like a new standard but I know it's it's kind of weird, especially for people who have been shooting for a long time, like from DSLR age. But once you get used to the new thing, you will forget what you used to have. You know the you know the way the camera is. It's obviously changing. The new thing is born, and the old thing dies. And this new thing will die once the another new thing is born. We have been adopted, uh, you know, destroying old values and admitting new standard. If we get obsessed with the past too much, then we get lost in time. You know, the world we live today is spending time tremendously fast. So what we got to do is keep ourselves updated. But I'm not saying... Let's be the slave of the standard. I'm saying, let's always doubt what we already have. But you know what? I'm gonna stop right here today. Because if you let me keep talking like this, I might say something very delicate and inappropriate. So yeah, someday. Okay, this is it. If you have any questions about this lens, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. Or if you have any request or something to say to me, also leave the comment below. So today's topic is pretty much it. And thank you for watching this video. If you like this one, show me your thumb and uh, hit the subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.